good morning, everybody. Hello, everybody. It's so good to see everybody. My name is Eric Bucci, and I am the lead pastor here at Cornerstone Church. If this is your first time joining with us here today or joining us online, I just want to personally welcome you, and I really appreciate you being here. More than that, I just want to let you know how much God loves you, and there's hope from whatever you're going through. And one of the models of Cornerstone Church is the best days are always ahead for those in Christ Jesus. So guys, can you do me a big, big favor? Let everyone know you love them and welcome right here. Nice and loud and obnoxious. Come on. Can you be better than that? Come on. <laughs> well, we're so glad that you're here today. And uh, we are uh, in the middle of 21 days of fasting and prayer. And I really want to encourage you with this. You know, sometimes when you try to go after God, everything breaks loose. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed when you try to go after God and make a change, you blow it worse? Well, we're in a spiritual attack. You know, the enemy does not want us to grow closer to him because he knows that if you have your best year spiritually, you'll have your best year of your life. And so our encouragement is right now to put God first. We're meeting here Monday through Friday, 6.30 to 7.30 a.m. <clears throat> right here, and we're going through spiritual warfare right now. So we're actually teaching on that and praying for each other. You can go online as well, or you can be here in person. We'd love to see you to be there, Okay. Hey, uh, also growth track today at 1 o'clock. Well, just want to ask you guys a quick question. What would happen if, imagine this for a moment. Imagine someone came and knocked on your door, and they're not knock on your door. They took a, they broke your door down, and they came into your house with guns and uniforms, and they were to put a gun in your face and says, are you a, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? And they say, we want to know right now, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? What would you say? Yes. Well, this happened actually in Russia, the former Soviet Union, where this is what happened. These guys came in and they broke into a place and said, if you are a Christian, um, if you, if, no, but basically put a gun at them and said, if you're a Christian, um, we're going to shoot you. And uh, they said, otherwise, you need to leave. And the people left, and the people that were left were the real Christians. They said, woof, you're the real Christians. It was a test, and it's a true story. Uh, but, you know, right now around the world, there's persecution among the church, among Christians. And another question I was going to ask you, if, if you were to be arrested and you were to be brought through a court of law, and they were to ask you, and they would try to find evidence to prove that you're a believer in Jesus Christ, a follower of Jesus Christ, and that you've given your life to Jesus, what evidence would they have to convict you or I? You see, everybody, I don't know if you realize that right now around the world, there's persecution going on around the world. We're going to talk about that today. And Jesus talks about persecution. And it's a promise. If you serve Jesus, you will be persecuted. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came to church today, everybody? <laughs> but it's beginning to happen more and more. And we're going to be talking about that today. But we've been going through the Beatitudes. And what it's all about is a preamble to the Sermon on the Mount, which we'll be spending some time on. It's an amazing teachings of Jesus is absolutely amazing and controversial. We're going to be touching on topics. We have two more weeks of this, and then we're going to go into the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus brings up things that are so amazingly controversial and gets to the very heart of what you and I are facing. He sent his word, and he healed their disease. There is a disease in our heart. There is a disease in our world, and the only way we're going to get through is through the word of Jesus Christ in our life. His word, he sent his word, and he healed their disease. And I want to encourage you, as we've been going through the Bible daily, I want to encourage you to make that time with the Lord, as we mentioned last week. Well, the Beatitudes are the preamble to the, great, the Sermon on the Mount. And so the very first week, we talked about those that are poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And basically, what it gets to the point where you and I all realize that without God, we have nothing. That we're like beggars. Not that we're beggars without God, but with, but with, with God, we're not beggars. But we're begging because we're so hungry for him. And Jesus is talking to a people. He's basically talking to the religious community that are all around there as well. And he's saying, those that are hungry, those that are beggars, they're the ones that is the kingdom of heaven. Are you poor in spirit? Will you recognize without God, you can do nothing? Unless you and I get to that place, we're really not functioning in the way we could. Then we're blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. We talked about that in, in this world. You're going to have trouble. You're going to have difficult things going to happen. And, you know, and the best thing is this, that you may weep at night, but joy comes in the morning. The best days are ahead in Christ, and God is close to the broken heart. And maybe you're going through a difficult time, the loss of a loved one. Maybe this is your first year without your parents or your spouse or your child, and you're struggling with it. God understands your mourning. 
We talked about that. We talked about the meek and how the meek will inherit the earth. It doesn't make any sense. How can the meek power under control? Where we recognize that God has this thing. Not that we're weak. Not that we're walking around. No, we're strong in the Lord. And then those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. That they realize that, that the diet of this world has nothing for us that will satisfy. Only Jesus will satisfy. And we know we're so wealthy in this country that we have the ability to acquire a lot of things. And maybe you've gotten to the place where you've acquired a lot of things. Is there nothing more than this? That's because your appetite is made for Jesus. And the reason why we're doing the hunger as we're doing the prayer and fasting is we want to make sure that our hunger is more about God than social media. Our hunger is more about God than it is food. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers. And today we're talking about something else. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Notice it says, I'm so glad the Bible says that. Because a lot of people are persecuted and they blame God for it. I've heard people blame God because they're not doing well. They're not doing well in the job. Well, that's because I'm a Christian. No, you're not working hard. You come late and you leave early, right? And you're talking about Jesus all the time, and, and you're listening to Caleb and having chicken sandwiches, but you're not doing your work. I had to bring it up. I did it last week. But so many people do that. They blame God for that, and they blame God that they're getting fired. No, work hard. Work unto the Lord. I don't care who you're working for. You are to work unto the Lord. If you're working for an ungodly boss, then work like you're working for God. That's what the Word of God says. And so you should be the best employee, not the worst. And so, you know, those that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That means all the resources of heaven are yours when you're persecuted. And that's a good news. No, when you hear that, you're not like, I, I don't want to be persecuted. Who wants to be persecuted? No one wants to be persecuted. But I remember reading an article a couple of years ago. We have a number of people in this church from Iran, and they are refugees and came to this country because of persecution. The church they were at is closed. And what would happen sometimes is, even though maybe on the books it was okay, people would disappear. What happened? Oh, he got in a car accident and died. And so they would just do that, and they would just kill somebody and, and blame it on a car accident. Or they would, they would incarcerate you and make up false charges. And we have people in this church that actually escaped that, and, and, and they became citizens, and we love them greatly, and they brought such a riches to our church. But I also read an article about uh, a woman that was, that was in Iran and under a lot of persecution, going through a difficult time. And, and, and the church is growing exponentially. They can't stop it. The, the more they squeeze the church, the more it grows. The more they hit it, the more it multiplies. Because the real church, you cannot stop. No kingdom can stop it. Then somehow she came to the United States, and she was here for a couple of years, and, and what she said, something very, very impactful. She said this. She says, I don't know what's going on, but I feel like it's almost more difficult sometimes to live in America than it was in Iran, because here there's a satanic lullaby putting me, putting me to sleep, that all the materialism, all the blessing of America, I get drunk on the culture. We start drinking of the culture. And she said it's like a satanic lullaby. And I'm afraid, everybody, if we're not careful, we're dying. It's almost like carbon monoxide poisoning where you fall asleep and don't even realize it. And what happens is comfort can happen to us. And sometimes the greatest test for us is when things are going well. But I think God's grace is coming on our culture where the heat is starting to turn up is turning up around the world. The Bible says he's coming back for your pure bride. How does God purify his bride? By letting it to be purified through fire. God doesn't want it to take place, but he'll use it for his glory. And so we're living in a world that more and more people are persecuted now than ever in the history of the world. Of course, there's more people on the planet. Places like North Korea. Places like China. We're going to talk about it in a few moments. But blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Notice that. All these beatitudes, everybody, have an eternal mindset. Without eternity, it doesn't make sense. You see, everyone, we're just passing through here. 
There's a great cloud of witnesses that are up in heaven that have lived our life, and they're cheering us on here. We are part of God's ultimate plan throughout history, and right now it's our time on the field. And so rejoice, be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For as they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And Jesus talks about that in Matthew 5, 1. Also in, in Matthew 5, 1 and 2 says this, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. That's what he's talking about, that we will be blessed. You see, right now, the church is persecuted today. 80% of all acts of religious discrimination in the world are directed at Christians. And this is from the International Society of Human Rights that has nothing to do with Christianity or anything. They, they do not stand up for us at all. But they recognize that 80% of persecution around the world is against the church, against Christians, against God's people. Why is it that the world hates the Jews and the Christians so much? Because the Jews are God's firstborn that are wayward and they need to come back to the Savior. And God loves them and has a plan for them. And he's using us to make them jealous and work together and so the enemy is against them the enemy knows that why would you hate someone so is a supernatural hatred that's happening we saw what happened in texas yesterday it's demonic there's a hatred of the people of god why because the enemy knows his time is short the war is already won in world war ii when they finally won the war the Nazis went crazy before the Allied forces came and would even cause more damage because they knew their time was short. And this is what the enemy is all about right now. He's running around and is trying to cause as much difficulty as possible. And I believe he has us by the throat in America by a life of ease. It's more, probably the best method he could use. It happened in Israel. Israel would cry out to God. And then they'd say, oh, God, save us. And he'd send up a judge. Things got better. They got lazy. They got fat and spiritually. They became lethargic. They went to a satanic lullaby. And they went headlong into sin. Sometimes it's God's mercy that he sends persecution. If God didn't send me a little persecution, I would have never given my life to him. He let me fall. He let me hurt myself. He let me experience some pain that brought me to him. And maybe that's your story as well. But 80% of all acts of religious is, is against the church. Every day, 13 Christians worldwide are killed. Every day, statistically speaking, and 12 are kidnapped. This is what's happening right now in our world. This is what Jesus says. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. How many want to grab that blessing? I want to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sufferings. I don't want the sufferings. Who? No, no right person wants to suffer. But yet, this is what's beginning to happen in our culture today. Blessed are the persecuted. If you are a follower of Jesus, you will be persecuted. Let me ask you a question. Are you being persecuted for your faith? What evidence is there to persecute you? Well, how can I say that? Well, the Bible says it. <laughs> Indeed. What does that say? Look at your neighbor say, you're an all. And say, so will you. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ. Notice, who desire to live a godly life in Christ, Jesus, what? Will be persecuted, hands down. Are you being persecuted at all? I'm not talking about being persecuted for being, being weird or not doing your job or being, no, we're not talking about that. I'm talking about for doing the right thing. Are you being persecuted because you, they're asking you to give falsified reports and you refuse to do that? Are you being persecuted like Hobby Lobby was in 2004 when there was a, from the couple of administrations ago, they had this universal health care and they made companies have to abort, uh, provide abort efficient contraceptions and and birth control, including abortion, and Hobby Lobby, the Green family. God bless them. They're an amazing family. One of, I think they're one of the Rockefellers of the Christian faith in our world today, helping our society. And they said, no, we will not do that. We'll take the fine. We'll close. But we're not going to bow down to that. We cannot do that. We must serve God and man. And they were respectful. They were wonderful. They were not jerky about it. Nothing like that. They said, no, we must do that. And so what do they do? They used all the laws of the land, and they went to all the way to Supreme Court, and Supreme Court, five to four, ruled in their favor, in our favor. Five to four, everybody. You don't think the Supreme Court matters? It does. 
And, and so this is what's beginning to happen. We're seeing this happen more and more and more, that our rights are being taken away. In fact, in, in, in after 9-11, you saw what happened in 9-11. They had the Patriot Act, okay? And that was under the other administration, the, the right wing and the left wing, right? The, that, the elephants were in control then, right? And what did they do? They took a lot of our privacy away through the Patriot Act to try to get the terrorists. Have they, have they given the power back? No. It's happening more and more and more, everybody. And we're, we're handing over our rights. We're, we're, what we're doing is we're being set up. Now, people would say, well, that's, that's God's will. Well, God has made us to be U.S. citizens. The apostle Paul, when he was beaten, he said, you cannot beat me. I'm a Roman citizen. They're like, oh, oh my goodness, he's a Roman citizen. In fact, talk about, talk about the luxury Paul had. Paul was beheaded instead of being crucified. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. He couldn't be crucified because he was a Roman citizen but he could be beheaded. And so the apostle Paul said, I appeal to Caesar. You can't do that to me. He used every resource available to him because he lived in a society that had rules and regulations. You and I have rules and regulations here, and we should be a part of the process of, of defending life for ourselves and other people. But we must be of the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of Donald Trump or Joe Biden or anyone else. Not the kingdom of the masked or the unmasked. We're the kingdom of heaven, everybody. That's what we're supposed to serve. Okay? It's not the kingdom of the vax or unvax. It's about Jesus Christ. That is our battle cry. That's who we serve. And we need to understand that because what's happening is we're aligning with things that have nothing to do with Jesus. They just take us and they use us. They use our slogans and they, they fool us. They basically seduce us to use us. The Republicans do it. The Democrats do it. And we've been fooled. We've been raped by the political systems. We've been abused by the political systems. We have to step out of that and say, no more. I'm serving the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone. And not get caught up in this. We're being played as fools. We really are. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the Apostle Paul. He's saying, when I am weak, I am strong in Christ Jesus. Jesus goes on to say the following. He says, in Matthew 24, 9, he says this. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation, which means a lot of trouble, and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. That's just what's beginning to happen. In fact, all around the world now is taking place. And the book of Daniel talks about that as well. But I wanted to show you this a little video. Uh, gives you a little idea of what's going on. Go ahead and roll that, please. In the world today, one in eight Christians are discriminated against, oppressed, even attacked, just because they follow Jesus. They are desperate voices crying out in a dry land. When I became a Christian, my beliefs turned against me. I no longer belong. In China, the government installed facial recognition cameras in our sanctuary. That camera can gather the private data of our church members. They will intimidate them, they will prevent them from going to church. That means We know from this year's World Watch List that 340 million Christians live in places around the world where they are discriminated against or persecuted because of their faith in Jesus. That number is hard to imagine, hard to get your mind around. But we know that God is faithful. In the book of Isaiah, God tells his people, I will make new ways in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In midst of persecution, churches are growing more. Through the persecution, God is making the church grow. We are so united together like never before. We have a revival in our church, even in the severe persecution. <laughs> God has sent a river into the wilderness, and his people are resilient. Like the Joshua tree, they're living boldly in the desert, and they depend upon the church, the roots of his family, for water and support. 
They are so encouraged by Christians around America. Pray for them, really care for them. It's like a body of Christ. The prayer is the core. When you don't know anything, just pray. When you don't understand anything, pray. You will understand. What's happening, what's going on in the world right now, they say, this is what they say. We're not praying that we get out of this. We're praying that we'd have strength to stand. Can you imagine? I don't know about you, but I'd probably say, hey, God, you know, get me out of this. No, we don't want that. We want to be strong. In fact, I was just reading also Dave Curry, president of Open Doors, said this. You might think, you might think about oppression, but the list is really about resilience. The number of God's people who are suffering should mean the church is dying, that Christians are keeping quiet, losing their faith, and turning away from one another. But that's not what's happening. Instead, in living color, we are seeing the words of God recorded in the prophet Isaiah, I will make way in the wilderness and rivers and the desert. God's church is growing like never before. God's church is growing in China. China is a major human rights violator. They are persecuting Christians. They are giving fines to people. They're losing their jobs. China is not a good country. The Chinese people are amazing. They're incredible people, but the communist government is evil and America is bowing down because they give us money. Hollywood makes more money out of China than they do almost do in the United States. And we and the sports teams, they're afraid to say anything against China because they like our sports. And what we're doing is we're turning a blind eye to human violation because we want to worship the golden calf of, of economics. Let me tell you everybody, we as a church should stand up and we should call our congressmen and our senators and say, what's happening in China is wrong. We love the Chinese people. We're not into xenophobia and all that nonsense that people accuse us of. No, it's not about that. It's about standing for what's true. The Chinese people are beautiful people, and they are, there's a revival going on, and they're going to supersede the American church, and China is the next superpower of this earth unless Christ comes back. And the good news is the church is exploding as they try to squash it. The more they try to squash it, the more we're gross. So this is happening right now in our world. So I'm going to look at the book of Daniel in the remaining time here today. Because Daniel really kind of shows what can happen. You know what happened? Nebuchadnezzar was a Babylonian king. He was the powerhouse of the, of the age. And what happened was they sacked Jerusalem. Jerusalem was God's people. And they took him into captivity. And what, what Nebuchadnezzar did, he took the brightest and the best. And he took all the smart people and all the people that had a lot of skill. And he wanted to recondition them. And he wanted to change their identity. He wanted to change their identity. One of the things the enemy always likes to do is to change the identity. The reason there's an identity crisis today in America, there's an identity of marriage, an identity of a male and a female, is because the enemy's out to destroy God's image. And if he can get you to believe a wrong thing about your identity, then he can destroy you. We're not against people. We're against the enemy who is fooling people to drink arsenic. This is what's happening in our culture today. And there were three Hebrew young men. I'm, I'm not going to try to say their names, but the... That's my daughter's name. Hannah uh, means the first Hebrew boy is God is gracious. The second one, Mishra, which who is like God, and Ariah is God has helped us. God is our help. Those were their names. But what they did in Babylon is said, no, we're going to change their names to the famous ones, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or my shack, your shack, and a bungalow. <laughs> Shadrach is the moon god of that, of that false religion. Mish, Meshach is who, who is... What Aku is, and uh, to, to bed we go, which my wife says every night at nine, servant of Naboo, which is the, one of the planets in Star Wars. But anyhow, that's beside the point. But they changed their name. Why? Because if you can change someone's name and get them to believe the wrong identity, you have control on them. Are we letting our culture tell us what's right and wrong? Are we believing what the entertainment uh, industry is telling us? Are we believing what the political parties are saying? I'm concerned what's going on because we're being set up and we're laying down and we're handing over our rights. Listen, if the Apostle Paul was here, he'd be standing up and saying, listen, hold on to your rights because God has placed America at this time in history to be a protector of the world, to be the place where the gospel goes forth and we should fight for our rights not for political parties everybody and I've seen the church unfortunately so divided it's, it's, it's really disheartening I'm going to say a few things that might offend you and if I do get over it please can you guys get over it are we going to pussyfoot around here we're going to be real men and women we 
We're, okay, thanks a lot. I'm not, you guys, I'm not throwing you red meat, so be careful. I'm not going to throw you red meat. <laughs> but let me just say this right now. What's happening is not good. The church is dividing over vaccinations. It's stupid. That's dumb. This is what I tell people. Talk to your doctor who knows what he or she's talking about. Just because you look at a TikTok video or some dude's got a stethoscope around his neck on YouTube, who cares? Talk to your doctor. Talk to people that know what they're talking about. Get the research. There's a lot of false information. It's, it's almost impossible right now to find information. I don't know, right? Talk to your doctor. Pray and ask God. And do what the Lord told you. If the Lord told you not to get a vaccination, then don't get a vaccination. If God told you to get a vaccination, then get a vaccination. If you don't do what he told you to do, you're sinning. The Bible said that about meat sacrificed to idols. If God said it's okay in Paul's day to eat meat sacrificed to idols and they eat it, they're fine. But if God told you not to, don't do it. I'll go ahead and say it. I got the vaccinations, okay? You're going to leave the church over now? I got them. I did what they asked me to do. Okay? But I'm against the mandates. That's dangerous. I have a teenage daughter, and I don't want any mandates for her right now. <laughs> so what I'm concerned about is this. What, everybody, listen. I, it's especially when the science is all over the place, right? And by the way, we don't worship science. We worship God. Let me say something about science. Science is the discovery how God made things. Theology discover who God is. Science in, in Christianity and God have nothing in problems. There's nothing wrong with it. You should not be afraid of science, everybody. God is the truth. And so what we see happening today, why are we fighting and dividing over this, everybody? We shouldn't be doing that. Does that make sense? I, I know I shouldn't step up, but I'm going to step because we can't get away from it. We've been played a fool. We've let the enemy change our identity. There are Christians who identify more with a political party than they do Jesus Christ. Just because they say a couple slogans, they played us. They've been playing us for generations, everybody. It never works. We have to step out of it, and you have to say what's wrong with your political party, if it's right or wrong, and say it. It's not about a political party. It's about the kingdom of heaven. And we should vote correctly. We should vote for righteousness. But no party has it all together. Okay, everybody? So I'm just I'm telling you right now, it's really discouraging when I see the church divided. And if you're going to leave because I did a couple things, listen, if God told you not to, then don't. I, I am turning green, however. So I don't know what's going on growing scales. But besides that, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm also starting to speak Chinese. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can we just have a little fun? Okay, thank you. Blessed are the persecuted. If you are followers of Jesus, you will be persecuted. The enemy wants to silence your voice. He wants to silence your voice. He tried to silence the voice of the Hebrew boys in Babylonia. You see, in Daniel 3, 8 and 3, 18, we're going to have to go a little quickly through here. Therefore, a time the Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews... They declared to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You know, they're just trying to butter him up, right? Butter, butter him up. They're lobbyists, okay? You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe or lyre, trugon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. Are we doing the same thing? Worshiping the golden image of the economy? Worship the golden image of being liked? And this is what was happening. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the fiery furnace. The, our culture is telling us to bow down and do what they say. We have to ask God, gather the information, and pray, and be obedient. And that's why I can't tell you what to do except for those things. And gather the facts, everybody. Jesus is the way. He's the truth. What happens is you start believing a bunch of conspiracy theories, your mind gets pickled with lies, and you can no longer discern what's true or not. You know what we need to do? We need to spend more time in the Word. You want to wash your mind, get into the Word every single day. If we read more of the news than the gospel, it's not good. Every day, I'm, I'm telling you, I know I'm like a broken record, but every day I need to get into the Word, and it cleans my mind. The Word is so important. The Word is living. It's active. It, it's like medication. It's like... A vaccination.
It is. It vaccinates you from the lies of the enemy. But if you're reading, oh, uh, all these, you know, these networks on television and listening to all this stuff, and you're, you're stuffing yourself with that stuff, just because they mention Jesus, you're, being, you're letting your identity be changed by the enemy by trying to help God out. So this is what begins to happen. Do not fall down. Here's a high school coach in, in the Washington State, and, uh, and, and, and what happened was this. They, he, at the end of the game, he bowed down. And thank God for winning the game, or he thanked God for the game. And he lost his job. So they brought it before the Supreme Court. Supreme Court, we don't want to hear it. Listen to the older court. Well, it's back up the Supreme Court. Now they're going to hear it. And so this man is bold. This man stands for truth. Are we just going to lay down and say whatever they want to do? No. We're, we're, first of all, we're kingdom of heaven, number one. Number two, if you're a citizen of America, you have a certain amount of rights you should utilize, but do it respectfully and do it outside the political system and do it within the, talking to the political system, using the political system, but not being a part of the political system. Okay, this is what we need to do, and that's what he did. And so these guys were basically accusing them of not listening. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, pay no attention to you. So that's kind of true. They weren't in that area. They do not serve our gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. And so our culture wants you to worship the golden image that they have. Our culture wants you to live with your girlfriend before you get married. Our culture wants you to get high and do drugs. Our culture wants you just to accept whatever it says. Our culture wants you to be dishonest. And as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. My culture says your truth is your truth, my truth is your truth. And the kingdom of heaven says there's only one truth. Amen. You see, are we, just, are we eating what they're giving us? Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a furious rage, this is what happens. When you go against the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of darkness gets in a furious rage. Should we be in a furious rage? No, we should be angry, but don't sin. And so he was in a furious rage, commanded that Sadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought so they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true, O Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? At least he asked if it was true. Could they give him credit? He didn't just hear it on YouTube with a guy with a stethoscope around his neck. Okay. <laughs> that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you're ready... When you hear the sound of the horn and such and such, fall down and worship the image that I have made. So basically say, hey, listen, if you change your ways, you go ahead now, you go ahead and falsify those reports. You go ahead now, I don't want you having a Bible on your desk when you're teaching school. You can't have that. You can't have a Bible then. You can't pray before your meal. You can't do these various things, right? Now, if you're ready, when you hear the sound, fall down and worship the image that I have made. Well and good, but if you do not worship, you shall be immediately cast into a burning, firing furnace. Now, we're going to be wise, everybody. How many of you got these sensitivity training courses that haven't worked now, right? Yeah, just listen to them, okay? But you know what? Those sensitivity trainings, God bless them, but we must serve God more than the sensitivity training. We should still be sensitive and, and, and conscientious, but we don't have to listen to what they say. If they go against God, you have every right in the world not to comply. Amen. You do. In Canada right now, there's, I, I have to do more research on this because I don't want to be careful what I say, but there, there's certain passages of Scripture. If you read on, on the air, you cannot read Romans chapter 1. Well, guess what? We're going to read Romans chapter 1. We're going to read the Bible, and they, they throw us out. They throw us out. We must stand for God no matter what the consequences are. Amen. I'm serious, everybody. Are you willing to do that? And maybe you're not, maybe you are. So we have to train ourselves now. We have to get ourselves ready. This stuff is coming around. You can see it. This, this table's being set, everybody. You know what they're going to do? I'm going to go ahead and say it, what they're going to do. And I see it happening. The Patriot Act took a lot of our rights away. Now they're trying to make everything a health crisis. So it's a health crisis that you believe that a man and a man, a man's a man and a woman's a woman. If you don't believe that, you're causing a health crisis to a young child, and that child could commit suicide or something like that. And so that's a health crisis. And because of that, we have to arrest you or you have to pay a fine. And what they'll do is they'll squeeze you into the category of a health crisis. So you see what they're doing. They may not even be aware of what they're doing. But be very careful, everybody. 
you see what's happening. We have to stand up as citizens of heaven and speak to the culture about and around us without wearing, wearing certain paraphernalia. It's okay to vote a certain way, but we are kingdom of heaven first. We are kingdom of heaven first, and this is what begins to happen. He says, and who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? You people are so stupid. You believe in a God. Come on. Middle-aged nonsense. Well, God will deliver us out of the hands of the enemy. Yes, he will. The Bible says it. So Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to him, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, you need to wear our baseball cap. Oh, I'm sorry. He didn't say that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. We have no need to show you our card. <laughs> That we are a bail carrying card. Okay, oh, you're careful. Okay. Oh, never can I, I better stop. We, we have no need to answer you. I want to stay on the, on the Bible. Okay, we're having a little fun. Can we have a little fun, everybody? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Notice, they spoke with him with respect. They did not call him all kinds of words. And I'm not going to even talk about it, Okay. He they did not call, they gave him respect. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, we, we must serve God. They listened to him. But if not, be known to you, O King, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. We must obey God rather than man. If you throw us in prison, if you throw us in the fire, then throw us in the fire. But we must obey God rather than man. That's what they said. And they said it with respect. Because every person's made in the image of God, whether you disagree or agree with them or not, whether they live a different lifestyle or not, we need to show respect to every single person. But we can be respectfully disagree and refuse to do something. Doesn't mean you have to be a jerk about it. Okay? Jesus, only per person Jesus was a jerk to was the church because the church was jerky in his day. I can't believe I just said the word jerk. Okay. I'm not supposed to say that. Okay. So. Blessed are the persecuted. If you are a follower of Christ, you'll be persecuted. The enemy wants to silence your voice, and intense peer pressure is what he tries to use. Everyone else is doing it. Everyone else is doing it. It said Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and, and, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why? Because he was all about the kingdom of darkness, and the enemy got into his spirit. And you're going to find, why do people get so enraged with Christians? Why? Because it's supernatural, everybody. Why did they hate Jewish people so much? It makes no sense. Unless there's spiritual warfare and the enemy's attacking. And it's quite obvious he is. There's a supernatural hatred of Jewish people. There's a supernatural hatred of Christians. It just doesn't make sense why they would be so against us. So he ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was. And you might find the heat turning up around you, everybody. Don't be intimidated by the heat. Be smart. Be wise. Jesus says, be as wise as serpents and gentle as doves. Jesus did not let himself be fooled. He would answer their questions with questions. Okay? You don't walk around, I'm a, I'm a, you know, be very smart. Be wise. Don't be put into a trap. I just tell it like it is. No? Think first. Think first. Ask God for wisdom. We got to be wise. Okay, and that's what, Je listen, look what Jesus did. He was extremely wise. He didn't answer all the questions they asked him. He could have, but he didn't, because he knew there was a trick. So don't listen, don't let people answer, don't answer questions when they're trying to trap you. Don't even allow yourself to get into that. And that's what's going to happen. Well, I'm being bold for the Lord. No, you're being ignorant. Be smart. Jesus says, be as wise as serpents and gentle as Dove. So they're going to turn the heat up. And he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, firing furnace. So let persecution refine and empower you. Let persecution. What happened, what happened to Joseph? He was thrown into prison. What did he do? He got better. You can either get better or get better. Let persecution refine us. That's what we need to be able to do. Then these men were bound with their cloaks and their tunics, their hats and their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning, firing furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace was over, overheated. Have you noticed how overheated everything is? I've never seen our culture this overheated. The heat is high. 
The flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Have you noticed the heat they're turning up? They're beginning to burn themselves. Have you noticed that? They try to trap, and they end up getting trapped themselves. The heat is so high that they're falling into their own fire. But be smart. Don't fall into the fire with them. Make sure it's the fire that God allows, not the one you bring upon yourself. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, firing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose in haste. He declared to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, But I see a four. I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire. Listen, everybody. When you serve God, you're not bound. Stephen, the first martyr of the church, began to preach the gospel. They began to throw stones at him. He was unbound. He saw the heavens open up, and he saw the, right, he saw the Son of God in heaven. And he was not bound. He was free. And he proclaimed Jesus Christ while stones were being thrown at him. He says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And there was another man there, a religious leader by the name of Saul, who would become the Apostle Paul who was rocked by that persecution. I believe it had an effect upon him. I believe it burned in his brain. And Stephen, through his death, the church began to spread out the first martyr of the church. See, God uses us in this process. It's not about, listen, we're in God's army. Sometimes God will tell us to take a hill. We have to be willing to die on that hill for God. We're, we do it in the military. Are you willing to die for Jesus Christ? Are you willing to die on Calvary Hill like he did? Listen, everybody, this is such a short span of life. Why are we worrying about this little bitty bit of time when God has eternity for us? And the sap traps and the prefects and the governors and the kings and counselors gathered together and they saw that the fire had not any power over the bodies of those men. Listen, don't let the fire burn you. God is with you. He will be with you in the middle of the fire. When you're under persecution, stand strong. I'm going to serve God. When you serve God, God is with you. I'm telling you, don't be afraid. We need to make a decision ahead of time because times are coming, everybody. Better to make up your mind now than wait for the time to come. The hair of their heads was not singed, their cloaks were not harmed, and the smell of fire had not come upon them. Let persecution refine, empower, and promote you. Those who live for Jesus Christ will be persecuted. Are you willing to be persecuted? Let's pray. Father, I pray today, Lord God, as we look at this message today, Lord, I know it doesn't really appeal to our comfort desires. But, Father, we know the ultimate comfort is to be in your will. The ultimate comfort is to know that we, our sins are forgiven. The ultimate comfort is to know that we'll be with you forever and ever and ever. And this is a very short span of time on earth. And what we do here matters for eternity. So, Lord, we know that we are on the precipice of eternity. And we want to make sure that we are living for you and by you and with you in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for boldness. Lord, I pray that you would just take stupidity out of us, Lord. Please, Lord that we would not be fooled anymore by political parties that are using us to get power by using our cliches and names. Father, that we would divorce ourselves from the things of this world and that we'd be resolute to you and that we'd walk in truth. And Father, I pray that we'd show preference for each other, that we'd show grace to each other. If someone thinks something different than we will, we would not persecute them, Lord, if they're in the faith. But we will work together for what's really important in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray you'd prepare us for the persecution that is coming, that we be ready, and that we would take our stand and be the protectors that you call us to be at this time in history, in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I do this every single service, and I ask you a question. How are you with Jesus Christ? If, if, if you were to die today, I know I ask this question, it's the most important question I can ask. If you were to die today, and, and God was going to say, well, why should I let you into heaven? What are you going to say? I went to church? No, no, nope. I'm a pretty good person. Nope. There's only one way you can be accepted by God. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. All of us don't have what it takes. Only Jesus does. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? Maybe you're struggling. You have questions. I had questions for a period of time as well. 
for about 12 months or so, I struggled with my faith. And I sought after God with all my heart. And I finally came to a conclusion that it was right. And I took that. If you're in that place, we honor you as well. You're welcome to be here. But if you're ready to take that step, I encourage you to just bow your heads and close your eyes just for a moment. I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe you used to walk with God and now you're not walking anymore. Maybe you've never surrendered your entire life. You always held on to it. Jesus will have no other. He's either first or he's last. Maybe you'd say, Pastor, today I want to give my life to Jesus for the very first time. I see a quick show of hands. Anyone say the very first time? Thank you. Anyone else that says, I walked away, I want to get right? Let's be real here today. Okay, let's pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, and as you as well, it's watching online. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for us. We believe you're the Son of God. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you rose again from the dead. Today, I step down from being in charge of my life. I declare you are God, and I am not. I choose to follow you. I ask you now to forgive me of everything I've ever done wrong, and I choose to turn away from that, and I choose to follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we believe you made a decision to follow Jesus. This is what Jesus says. He says, come, follow me. He does not say, raise your hand in church and you're good to go. No, come follow him. This is a people, we're a group of people that are following Jesus together. And, and so there's a card in front of you. You can pull it out. In the bottom it says, I'm committing my life to Christ for the first time or recommitting my life. And also, what you can also do, and put this in the uh, offering boxes when you leave, you can get your phone, you can text to 860-499-4888 and write belief and we'll help you with the next steps. Also, after the service, we'll have a prayer team up if you need prayer for anything at all, healing or you're giving your life to Christ, also the front desk, you're free to go there. We have a Bible for you and to help you on the next steps. Amen, everybody? Awesome. Hey, before we leave, I want to give you an opportunity to give back to the, to our, to the church and give back to what God is doing here. And so there's four different ways you can give. You can text 833-245-5608. You can download the Push Pay app, which you can find for Cornerstone. You can go online. And also, there are boxes in the back. And so I want to encourage you. I, I, I want to encourage you to put God first and trust his word and realize I'm giving the first to God. We believe in tithing here. We don't force you to tithe, but we believe in tithing. I encourage you to tithe. I've done it all my life. And God's always met my needs, not my greeds. And watch what God will do. Father, I pray you bless us all today. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you that you promise that you'll meet all of our needs. We ask that you meet all of our needs physically, mentally, and spiritually, and financially. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the grace and the peace of Jesus Christ fill you to overflowing. May you walk in the confidence in the grace that he's given you. In Jesus' name. God bless you guys.